everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on all the social networks. Uh, I've been big on Snapchat lately. Uh, lately, for those of you watching in the future, is 2016. I don't anticipate that changing anytime soon. Uh, here's how this works. You send me questions, and I will make a video response sometimes, uh, but most of the time, if not all of the time, I will reply to you in some fashion. Uh, it may not always be a video, but I will try to reply to everybody, okay? And I'll keep you anonymous, which is probably most important uh, for those of us in the industry. So today's video stems from a few questions I've been getting this week, and in, it revolves risk specifically pertaining to risk um, as far as when it comes to owning or starting up a clinical research site. So as entrepreneurs, our job is to minimize risk while maximize profit, maximize gain. Um, and I, I don't think being an entrepreneur is necessarily synonymous with being risky. I don't think that's the case. So let me give you an example okay a lot of you people uh, especially CRAs there's a lot of CRAs that want to quit their really well-paying jobs as CRAs I mean we're talking um, north of six figures right uh, 150k is typical from what I'm seeing with experienced CRAs um, they, they want to quit because they don't like the workload and the travel and they want to start their own site. And personally, I think that that's risky. And I've been in this industry as a research site owner for over 10 years now and working at research clinics uh, for uh, more than that. I think that's risky. I think people can get incredibly lucky or unlucky based on the PIs that they end up partnering with initially. And that first year or two years is really make or break when it comes to your research clinic. So some people get lucky and partner with great PIs. Other people get unlucky and, and partner with PIs that end up bailing on them within the first two years. And that one to two year activity really shapes the course for where that company, the fate of that research clinic uh, lies. And so I think that in order to minimize risk, the first thing you should do is minimize expenses, okay? So partner with a physician. Even if you have the money to open up a site, I would say partner with a physician. So spend most of your time finding and selecting someone who you think will be a good PI for you. Now, there's no way of knowing that beforehand, but spending time with them, working on small studies with them before you commit to larger ones and before you commit more resources such as study coordinator salaries to larger projects. Start with small projects, start with one project. You be the coordinator, okay? You can still do one study and not quit your job uh, provided that you can go to the clinic at least one or two days a week to see those patient visits. Get a feel for how the PI is doing in clinical trials. Get a feel for how they like research, how they like interacting with monitors. Um, and then only when you get your second study or your first study uh, after you've enrolled and randomized X amount of patients where you know, and this is where you're going to have to look at your budget, where you know that the revenue coming in from that one study with the projected patient visits uh, is going to at least pay for the costs that are going out, okay? You're not looking at making profit necessarily, you're just looking at breaking even within this first year or two years, all right? Only at that point, only when you know the projected visits from subjects you've already randomized, right? I don't want to hear about subjects you might randomize. Subjects you've randomized, their projected visits. If those visits can pay for a study coordinator or rent for a new office space, go for it. Do not risk your own money on this. Um, 
unless you want to, I wouldn't. This is the way I run clinics. This is the way I've started clinics. So do not put your own money up front. Let the studies generate the revenue. Play with the house money. Okay. Once the revenue, the projected revenue from the existing randomized patients, uh, from their projected visits, is enough to break even, then hire a coordinator, get an office space, or both. Maybe you don't need an office space, then don't waste your money. Maybe the PI's office, maybe the PI is allowing you to use his office and there's plenty of space in there and it's actually a good setup for a clinical research site. Do that. There's other things you could be spending the money on. There's more coordinators, there's equipment you need, there's training for your staff, um, but let the business pay for itself, okay? In this industry, I mean, we, we generate pretty good gross numbers where most clinics um, go out of business is uh, their net. So you gotta pay attention to the net profit, okay? Not gross revenue, the net revenue, which means what you take home. Uh, we don't typically have problems with gross revenues in this industry. A small study can pay you $100,000 over the course of a year, okay? I mean, that's a six-figure job. That, that equals, or almost equals, the average CRA salary, okay? So don't spend too much money up front uh, before you know all your variables, right? Um, when your variables become fixed, meaning these are subjective variables too, meaning the PI's attitude towards research, the PI's understanding of research, the PI's expectations of research, a lot of the stuff up front comes from the PI and their expectations of research and how they interact with monitors and what they think of research and from that stems more studies, monitors that will recommend your site for future trials, which will then start snowballing into more studies, more revenues for you, and most importantly, more profits. So don't risk your own money, okay? It doesn't matter if you have it, don't do it. Um, there's other strategies, other people have risked their money and have done well, others have not. I suggest you don't risk your own money. Why should you? You can start off small. Start by doing the work yourself, building your SOPs, your standard operating procedures, finding a coordinator, training them, finding an office space if needed, training them, and then repeating the process, finding more PIs, getting more studies, getting more special, getting more specialists involved in your clinic so you can open up your research company for other studies and go from there, right? That's how you minimize risk in clinical research when starting your own clinical research site, right? Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.